forecast from Colorado State University came out today. We're calling for a slightly but no normal hurricane season this year, a total of 13 named storms. Of those 13, five becoming hurricanes, and of those five, two becoming major category three, four, five hurricanes. Um, a typical season has about 12 named storms, six hurricanes, and three major hurricanes. Uh, specifically for the valley, what, uh, what can we expect? Yes, yeah, so these seasonal forecasts are for the Atlantic as a whole. We can't say when or where storms are going to strike uh, this far in advance. You really don't know where storms are going to hit, say, more than a few days in advance. Um, so what we can say though is that the overall season is looking slightly below normal, but obviously everyone in the valley, and as well as anywhere else along the coastline, needs to be prepared the same every hurricane season because it obviously just takes up one hurricane to make it a very active season for you. One thing you guys also mentioned was about some of the new instruments and new, new things that are coming up. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so we've been using, um, we use a statistical model based on historical data that we've been using for a very long time. I've been using that kind of technique for about 30 years. Uh, but we do have a new technique this year. We're using forecasts from a numerical model as well, uh, from the European Center. I'm uh, using the numerical model from there. And we call it improvement standard of forecasts. Uh, we're going to be using that one this year and then for the, for, for the foreseeable future. So what would potentially cause us to have a below average hurricane season? What kind of meteorological effects? Yeah, so one of the big things that we think, um, we, right now we have El Nino conditions, which is warmer than normal water in the central and eastern tropical Pacific. Right now we expect that those El Nino conditions will likely persist through the hurricane season. If those conditions persist, that tends to increase upper level winds. So high up in the atmosphere, increase those winds out of the west. That tends to, tends to tear apart the storms as they're trying to develop them to intensify. When it comes to the, the public, the models that you do, you're going to do them whether or not the public responds, but is the goal ultimately to get them prepared? And then how do you kind of counter apathy? Because from year to year, there's a sense, well, they were wrong last year or whatever. Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, a couple of years ago, a lot of people on the coast were talking about how we do with hurricane amnesia. We hadn't had any major hurricanes in the U.S. in a long time. And obviously, the last two years, very sizable portions of the coastline have been devastated by very significant hurricanes. So I think in terms of getting people prepared, a lot of it is how long has it been since the last really nasty hurricane hit your particular area. When it comes to the seasonal forecast, though, it's more just an informational tool. People are curious and want to know how active you expect the season to be. But again, we really can't say where the storms are going to go. And that's obviously, at the end of the day, what really matters is where the storm, if the storm is going to hit your neighborhood or not. That's something you just can't say months in advance. Right. For the general public as well, do you have any message of, of course, seeing all the information, all the data, maybe a little bit overwhelming, but do you have any message for the general public? Yeah, I mean, I think, again, the big thing is, you know, this is based on the kind of the large scale climate factors that we see right now, we expect that the Atlantic hurricane season is going to be slightly lower than what we see in an average season. But, you know, we've had many seasons in the past that were either below average or average that had lots of storms making landfall. And we can't say what the storms are going to make landfall months in advance. So the general public is just a matter of being prepared to say this hurricane season and every hurricane season. You, you, gave, two, you gave two examples of storms last year, major named storms that, that hit the United States. They were completely different events. One was more wind and one was more rain. Uh, can you talk about that real quick for for the public? Sure, yeah. So, I mean, with every hurricane, there's multiple threats. Um, you know, typically, I break it down into three major threats. You have your rainfall threat, your wind threat, and your storm surge threat. In the case of Hurricane Florence, Florence was a Category 1 hurricane where it made landfall, so it did some wind damage, but that wind damage was fairly minor. But obviously, Florence is moving very, very slowly, so it dropped a tremendous amount of rain. It also had a little bit of surge damage. With Hurricane Michael, it was a much more powerful hurricane. It was a high-end Category 4 at winds of 155 miles an hour when it hit. So it did a tremendous amount of wind damage and a lot of surge damage, but it was moving fairly quickly, so the rainfall damage was not nearly as high. But obviously, given how powerful it was, it did just a tremendous amount of wind and surge damage. Uh, you're more likely to have local governments uh, call for an evacuation with a, with a high strength storm, but that one developed quickly. So. Uh, does that kind of, which one's easier to prepare for, which one? <laughs> well, I think obviously always if you have a storm that basically blows up on your doorstep, those are really hard to prepare for because, again, the storm is named on a Sunday and we landfall on a Wednesday. But I think especially along the Gulf Coast, you know, we don't always have a ton of time. We don't always have a ton of notice. These storms can intensify very, very quickly. And so, you know, basically you just got to be paying attention to the weather. And if the emergency managers say you need to leave, you need to leave. Like, it's not one of the things you always have two or three days to prepare. And, and and Michael, 
formed in the Gulf of Mexico. Is that an example you were talking about? It's very difficult to forecast what the what's going on in the Gulf, what's going to happen in the Gulf. Is that true? Yeah. So that was a, so on a seasonal level, the Gulf of Mexico doesn't really correlate very well with um, kind of the large scale climate factors that we use in our seasonal forecast because Gulf storms form from a variety of different mechanisms. But likewise, on an individual storm basis, these Gulf storms can intensify very very rapidly, and they also can weaken very rapidly. And certainly do provide you know forecasting challenges. And every every hurricane for, provides a forecasting challenge. So this is also a particularly tricky to forecast. I think so. Yes. Uh, one of, one of our followers had a question. It's it's been unusually wet in the Northeast. Um, your analysis talks a lot about conditions over the water, but how impactful are weather patterns and conditions? over the continental U.S. on the upcoming hurricane season? Um, not particularly um, important this far out in advance. Um, typically, you look for um, base motions towards pressure patterns in the region themselves. Um, so obviously, you know, if, if, if it's been super wet in the northeast and the hurricane hits, I mean, as we talked about earlier today, if you have a lot of the soil moisture, are, the soil is already saturated and the hurricane makes landfall, obviously you're going to have flooding would be exacerbated because it moves out in the water being colored in full. Uh, but really there's not a ton of correlation between kind of what goes on in the uh, early on and what happens downstream. But you can actually get a little bit of a relationship. Sometimes the, uh, if you get a very, very kind of deep low pressure right off the east coast, you can get a big high pressure over Greenland, and that circulation actually tends to cause a lot of anomalous warming problems. And we actually did see that in the winter of 2009-2010.